Happy Friday afternoon, Broncos country. Wow, what a day, right? Sean Payton, George Payton, the rest of the front office seem to be quite busy today making three moves so far. I'm going to talk about those. One cut, two contract restructures, and a lot more cap space to work with now. And I'm sure this is just the beginning. I'm going to break all this down for you, what it means. All the cat possibilities moving forward, too. We'll break that down. But, of course, before I get started, would really appreciate it. You hit that like and subscribe if you like Broncos content. And let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on these moves? Who's going to be the quarterback of the Denver Broncos? It's probably the biggest topic that I've enjoyed talking about. I got another video coming out soon regarding those rumors. So please be sure to get in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Interacting with you guys is why I love doing this. So let's go ahead and get started. Here are the three moves that were made today. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Zach Stevens, for putting this out here. The Broncos have created over $20 million in cap space today by, one, reworking Tim Patrick's deal. This opened up $8 million in cap space. Okay, okay. And then we restructured Mike McGlinchey's deal. This is something that we were all expecting this opened up $11 million in cap space. And then this is a really surprising one, to be honest. Releasing tight end Chris Manhurts. This opened up over $2 million in cap space. Maybe he returns on a veteran, veteran minimum, which I think is below that. But Chris Manhurts is one of those guys. He's one of those Sean Payton guys, right? So I was a little surprised to see this. But great to see us creating space right now. We'll dive into the details and how this number can grow. Well, Broncos are sitting around $8 million right now with the assumed Russell Wilson cap hit of $35.4 million. And I just wanted to talk about these moves first. Love Tim Patrick that he's coming back. Tim Patrick's one of my favorite Broncos. It's killed me to see him not on the field the last couple of years, but I love the fact that he was willing to rework his deal. Yes, the Broncos don't save as much money as they would have than just cutting him, but I'm glad that they figured out some sort of compromise. He's a great uh, leader. I think he's loved in the locker room, and you got to hope that he can bounce back from the ACL and Achilles injuries and ha have a solid year contributing, hopefully in a depth role for the Broncos. But we have seen him be a starter in the past, if we need him to start alongside Mims, guess Mims is right now the only one <laughs> wide receiver that I feel good about coming back. We'll have to see if Cortland Sutton sticks around. I'm still thinking that he's probably going to be cut or traded. Y'all let me know your thoughts in the comments on that. And then with Mike McGlinchey, this was one of the, the first restructures that I thought that we should do. We're going to have a lot more cap space moving forward. This opens up $11 million. And I thought Mike McGlinchey, contrary to some, uh, had a pretty decent year for the Broncos last year. Of course, he's not a perfect right tackle, but he's a lot better than a lot of the right tackles that we've had in the last handful of years. And I want to see this offensive line stay together. I know Lloyd Cushenberry might not be the best fit for what um, – Sean Payton's trying to implement here, but outside of replacing center, I like the other guys. I would ideally would like to see Garrett Bowles here and we'll just have to see what happens there. But Chris Manhurts, of course, uh, leaving, this was going to be something that opened up a little bit of money that I thought they should consider, but I didn't think was going to be one of the immediate options. So y'all let me know again, who are you most excited about in terms of restructuring Mike McGlinchey, Tim Patrick. I'm sure you guys are pumped to have Tim Patrick back. It's still a little bit higher than what he would have gotten on the market, but hey, I like that we're keeping Tim Patrick. I'm not going to be too upset about it, okay? So let's go ahead and dive into the cap situation right now and how this looks for the Broncos and what moves I could see moving forward. Okay, So you see we have even better, just about $75,000 under $9 million, $9 million in cap space. This is great with these new adjusted numbers. So you see Mike McGlinchey's contract. He's now at a $7.4 million figure. Tim Patrick is at seven point one. million. So let's talk about, let's talk through some of the possibilities, okay? Hopefully you guys can see this a little bit better now. Yes, 
So we have that 8.9 million in cap space. And we still got a long ways to go. There are some moves that I think are definitely going to happen. The first being trading Jerry Judy. I think it's best uh, for him to move on. I think Sean Payton likes Marvin Mims. And so we'll see that happen. That's going to open up about $13 million more in cap space. Okay. Then another restructure that I think will happen is Ben Powers. This is going to save $8 million, opening it up to $30 million with that Russell Wilson cap hit, okay? Now, this is where things get tricky. I don't think Zach Allen had that great of a year, but he's still pretty young, 27. If we restructure him, and then we're trading away Cortland Sutton, because I I think that's probably going to happen, even though I'd like to see Sutton stay around. I I think they're probably going to trade Cortland Sutton if they're letting go of Justin Simmons, you know, guys that are approaching their 30s or in their early 30s. That opens up $9.7 million. So not going to hit this restructure for Mike McGlinchey since his cap figure has already been changed. And then Alex Singleton. Do you guys want Alex Singleton here? Do you guys want him cut? alongside Josie Jewell. Well, Josie Jewell's a free agent, but I don't think he'll be coming back. If we restructure Alex Singleton, we can save about $2.7 million as well. So with those five moves, along with cutting, I, I always come in here and do it. Tremont Smith will cut Damari Mathis and Awuzurike as well. He doesn't want to gamble. We don't want any gamblers on our team anymore. Um, we're now looking at a cap space of $52.7 million. Now, if we wanted to take that whole uh, $85 million cap hit with Russell Wilson, we have a lot more guys to trade. Let's say we do uh, cut DJ Jones or trade him where we're retaining a little bit of salary. That could save up to about $9.97 million. So even if we maybe retain a few million and then we're able to trade him to San Francisco, which which was rumored yesterday, what we could still potentially open up with these nine moves, about $60 million and some change in cap space, which is, which is plenty. Now, if we were wanting to adjust Russell Wilson's cap hit to like that 54 or 53 million, I forget the exact terms of it. That, that increases it by see about 18, about $18 million. So yeah, we would still have a little under $45 million to spend in cap space. That's wonderful stuff. We could rework Jarrett Stidham's deal because if we cut him, he's making only $2 million. Okay. Um, Or he's only on the books for $2 million. So he's a restructure, some sort of um, candidate that I could see. Maybe we sign him to another one year extension and, spread out that money a little bit more because he's in the final year of his contract. But there's a lot of possibilities here uh, with how the Broncos want to approach creating more cap space. How far will we go? How much of this Russell Wilson cap hit do we want to take right now? Uh, What You know, we're just going to have to see. What moves do you see the Broncos making next? Let me know in the comments. Again, really appreciate you guys being with me every step of the way, putting out daily Broncos content. Again, I will be back to talk about Kirk Cousins possibly coming here to Denver. How do you guys feel about that? Thanks again. Be sure to hit that like. And as always, everybody, go Broncos.